Hi, Dr. Pelto here. Uh, today we're going to go over a condition called Charcot foot. Uh, basically, this is one of the worst things that can happen if you or a loved one have diabetes. So we're going to look at detail at some of the ways of treating Charcot and how to deal with it long term. I think you're going to enjoy this episode. <music> So we're going to look over, uh, I'm going to show a healthy foot here. You can see everything is in alignment here. And you can see a Charcot foot. So basically a Charcot foot, the way I like to explain it, is a foot that has collapsed. And you're basically walking on a broken foot. And you might be wondering, how in the world can someone walk on a foot like this? How can someone walk on a foot that's broken? It's because when someone has a Charcot foot, it usually means, I would say usually 99% of the time, they can't feel their foot. And so basically they're walking on a foot that's broken. Now you might wonder why in the world this happens. Well, it happens because of something called diabetes and then also something that's called neuropathy. So let's look a little bit more at that today. So let's go here. Uh, we'll look at the, the, we'll go all the way back to the beginning here. We're gonna go through some of these things. So. When we're talking about Charcot foot, you can see there is neuropathy. Neuropathy in my practice tends to cause either diabetes due to diabetes or due to alcohol. Uh, both of these can cause neuropathy. And there's a couple of different philosophies behind it, and I'll kind of explain them. One is when you have neuropathy, it can affect the, the nerve endings. And these nerve endings are used to control blood flow. And so there can be an increased amount of blood flow to the area because basically you have to have the nerve endings to close off the blood vessels. If that's not working, it's going to open up and it's going to increase and have a lot of blood flow. That's why someone with Charcot foot is going to have a, a very red hot swollen foot. Another thing that can cause it as well is trauma or an injury. So many times patients, they might step off the curb the wrong way. They might go for a little bit longer of a walk, have a little bit of a trip and their foot just kind of balloons up. And very commonly people think that this is caused by an infection. And a lot of times it's not an infection. It's this problem called Charcot foot. So those are a couple of the causes. I like to explain this, uh, this idea with a, a dysfunction symptom index. So basically if someone has age, their age right here, and as the age you get older and older, when you get symptoms, now this can be any type of symptoms in your foot, but specifically uh, diabetic symptoms. So let me give you an example. If someone has dysfunction, so one of the dysfunctions could be diabetes, right? That could cause dysfunction to the sweating on the bottom of the foot, of how the blood vessels work, uh, things like that. They could also have a flat foot. They could do be less moving less or have tightness, or they could have a shoe that's the wrong type or some type of a foot uh, deformity. What happens for a lot of people, they live their whole life and they don't really have any symptoms, okay? But if someone has an incident, so their age goes on and they have more dysfunction, let's say they start to have just diabetes, no problem. Diabetes causes poor blood flow and neuropathy, that could cause a spike. And so these types of incidences we see when they go on this symptom, right, up into the symptoms. This could be a diabetic foot ulcer, a cut in the skin. This could be an ingrown toenail. This could be Charcot. And so a lot of our patients, especially diabetics, they might start out with having maybe a wound. Then they could have another wound. And so when we see them in the office, they have the symptoms and then we'll treat them and have this go back down, maybe have another issue. And Charcot is one of these really big spikes that we like to deal with. So if you have Charcot, um, how does this affect you? Well, it's going to affect you. Usually you get frustrated. Why? We have to, we'll talk about it a little bit, but you have to stay off your foot for like six months. If not, it could get a lot worse. You could have anger. Uh, you can't walk for exercise. You're really going to be off your foot. You're going to, you're going to get fatter. You're going to have weight gain. There's going to be a fear of surgery a fear of missing out on work, and then you can't be as active as you want. So these are all the, the problems with Charcot foot. I want to give you an example here of a patient, and I'm not going to show you a lot of gross pictures. If you want to look for gross pictures, um, you can look on look online, uh, you know, Google other, other pictures. But I want to show you an example of a patient. This patient has a red, hot, swollen foot, and they think it was an infection, but this isn't an infection this is actually a broken foot. And so a lot of times what happens, the story we get is they go into the emergency room, they get admitted for an infection. And then when they're off their foot and on antibiotics, their redness goes down. And it's not because of the antibiotic, it's because they're staying off their foot. Then when they start walking around or leave the hospital, the redness comes back. It's not because it's an infection, it's because of the Charcot. And this isn't a, 
this isn't painful. And so where the real dilemma comes in is when you have a big wound on the bottom. So you might think it's infection from the wound, but really it's the Charcot and, and things like that. So the main symptom is warmth to touch, redness, swelling, and then may or may not have pain. Okay, most people don't have pain to it. Uh, so they have a foot that looks like this, and many people think it's an infection and it's really not. So you should get it checked out. If you have one foot that is swollen, get it checked out. It could be Charcot. Usually it doesn't have it in both feet. I've had one patient that's had it in both feet. So let me give you an example on the x-ray. What do we do for exams? Well, an x-ray is how we start. And you can see, uh, for example, you can see all these little bumps up here. This is a kind of a healed Charcot. Everything kind of collapsed in here. All these bone fragments, they've all kind of healed into a big solid mass. Here's an example of one foot versus the other. You can see here um, all the all the joints and everything. And here everything's kind of collapsed down in there. Okay, that's an example of Charcot. And here's the exa example of collapsing. That's why a lot of these, when things collapse, they have these big prominences right here on the bottom. You can see how this looks like a rocker bottom foot. And that could very easily ulcer ulcerate because of all the pressure right there. So sometimes we have to shave these off or, or do a reconstructive surgery. So now for the bad news. Um, how do you treat it? Well, I treat my patients non-surgically. Occasionally, I'll have to do a surgery uh, if there's an ulcer to help it to heal. Uh, so, but the real big surgeries um, I don't do. I send them out uh, to other. We have a colleague in the office that does them. But the non-surgical treatment, phase one is six to 12 months. Okay. Hear that? Six to 12 months uh, kind of to get through that initial initial phase. What do you do? Well, is this boot good enough? Probably not. This isn't sufficient if you have Charcot. This is something called a crow boot. Basically, it's like a clamshell. It has these Velcro around it. It opens up, you put your foot in there and it closes. Now, when you have a lot of swelling, your swelling is gonna come down and it's gonna piston up and down. That's why you need to be seen by a professional, probably a pedorthist for this. Now, I usually, initially, I put people in one of these. Now, this has to be made, it takes about three to four weeks. I usually put them on a knee roller to stay off it completely, even though they're wearing this. And then I also have people uh, take their temperature on their foot, compare one foot to another, because as it gets better, the temperature will go down to a normal temperature. Now, this can take a long time, okay? Six to 12 months. Usually someone is in this or a cast or something for about six months, and then I see them every month and I get x-rays, and then they can take their own temperature if they want. Long time, I know, long time. Phase two, once the temperature comes down, everything starts to solidify in the x-rays, then we wanna take pressure off it. So there's a couple of options. This is called a patellar tendon bearing brace. This is a brace that attaches to the shoe. Um, that is an option. It looks kind of funny like Frankenstein. Here is one that goes in the shoe. I've had one incident where it actually causes blistering because it's in the shoe and takes up more space. And here are a couple of examples of shoes. Normally people don't wear shoes by themselves, usually there's a brace that goes with it unless you've been approved by your doctor, okay? Um, here is a, a checklist of, of different types of, uh, of treatments uh, just to kind of walk you through just as a review. So basically imaging, initially we'll get an x-ray. If we're unsure, we might get an MRI or a bone biopsy, biopsy. Why would we do that? Well, if we're unsure what's the cause of it, if there's an infection, if there's an ulcer at the same time, phase one treatment, temperature tracking, and that offloading with that boot, it's called a crow boot. It's a pedorthus that makes that, or some podiatrists do too. Then wound care until that wound heals can take a long, long time. Phase two is bracing and custom or non-custom shoes. And then preventative problems, preventative uh, things for you, uh, daily foot exam, uh, circulation studies to see how the blood flows, activity recommendations, shoe recommendations, podiatry follow-up, and then surgery or a second opinion. So Charcot foot is, a, is an issue that a lot of people kind of deal with. And uh, there, there's a lot of uh, other information. I'm going to include a couple of videos here that you guys can watch uh, about Charcot. And I put some resources here about uh, diabetes. Um, I really like kind of talking and helping to my, my patients with this. And it's a, it's a, it's a tough problem. Frankly, if you, if you have it, I would certainly see a doctor uh, and just be patient because it takes a long time uh, to get better. Okay. Once again, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Okay. Have a great day.